Good evening. Uh, my name is Matt Lawless. I serve as the Scottsville Town Administrator, and you're watching the meeting video for Scottsville's Town Council meeting on Monday, July 19th, 2021. Um, this meeting is held um, in compliance with Virginia FOIA and open meeting law. So we're physically assembled uh, present at the Town Hall, 401 Valley Street, and we're adding the Zoom and YouTube experience for increased public access. We have an online public comment period as part of our meetings, uh, but the agenda is posted online and physically, and our Town Council is physically present with the quorum uh, here in the building now, and the meeting is open to the public. Um, we'll finish setting up and um, start our meeting here in just a couple of minutes. If you're viewing online, I'm going to skip ahead the meeting video about three minutes when we assemble our quorum and we'll get started. Thank you so much. There's another minute. <clears throat> Who are we missing? Oh. Oh. Well, it's seven o'clock and this is really neat to see everybody back in here again. This is uh, something special. Let's stand and have a pledge of allegiance to the flag, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. May be seated. <clears throat> First up is the approval of the agenda. The consent calendar includes the approval of the agenda, the financial report for June 2021, and the past meeting minutes for May 19th, June 14th, the work session, and June 21st meeting. Okay. So do we have a motion to approve the consent calendar? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Good. Consent calendar is approved. We'll move into our for public forum area next. And we'll ask, it's nice to see a lot of people here, and I imagine some of them have something to say in the public forum. 
So who would like to go first? Okay, Charlotte, go right ahead. Come on up to the uh, podium. You all know the drill, state your name. And if, if you could, man, for the, for the benefit of the camera and the audience, um, just let us know who you are, where you live, and, and speak towards that microphone, man. Thank you. Okay. I'm sure it's state in Jordan. I live in the old Scottsdale School building, but it's for seniors. I'm here about the senior center. Um, the Skippers Club is what we're called now. We are in the town of Scottsdale. We're meeting at the Methodist Church so we can find a permanent home, which we're hoping the town of Scottsdale Council can help us do. Um, last week we had 13 members meet. The week before that we had 23. We've had several new people meet with us. We have one new person join our group. Um, uh, what we want to do is become a corporate so that we can file for, uh, you know, grants and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I talked with uh, Matt, and he's given me several um, ways to go. But I just wanted to um, thank the town council for letting me come the last time I came in listen to what I had to say and talk with me and thank the mayor for keeping in contact with me and trying to help me out. And we appreciate any help you can give us because we want to keep, all of us are going to be seniors at one time or another. I am now officially a senior. <laughs> <laughs> so um, this is something I really want to work toward is getting a center here. So the skippers can you know, everybody's welcome to come in to it, to go to the Senior Center at Esmont. No um, expectations are put on, you know, whether they come to our meetings or go to that meeting. Um, they're welcome to both meetings if they want to come. We just want to make it convenient because Becky, who is at the school, she's not able to go up there because of the wheelchairs. Um, Peggy Rose, who lives in Buckingham, she's in the wheelchair. It's more convenient for her to come here. Um, Marge, who just had surgery this week, she likes to come down here because it's more convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's when it was over the, the, the jail area, it was more convenient for the people at the school just to walk around the corner mm -hmm. and um, you know, come to the senior center, Miss Virginia, who will soon be 100 years old, can't mm -hmm. come if it's going to be out of the town of Scottsdale. So we want to keep it here. And any help you can help us find in a building that we can make our permanent home, we would appreciate your help. Mm -hmm. As you see, I drug some of the skippers with me tonight <laughs> That's all right. to get the support to show that, you know, we really really mean business. We really want to stay here. Um, and they really are behind me 100% to get this well, done. So well, <clears throat> like, I, like I tell people all the time, I can't promise anything, but we'll work on it. We'll no, see we'll, what we can do. Yeah. We're all going to be seniors at one right. point. These okay. guys right here, they're going to be seniors just like the rest of them. Yeah. And you don't want to sit at home all the time. Yeah and not have anything to do. We do crafts, we go on trips, and if we have somebody to sponsor us and have some money coming in, we go on to Fredericksburg, which they have a show and lunch, and they have good food mm. over there. <laughs> <laughs> and um, they have a, we went one year to see Miss, that driving Miss Daisy. Mm -hmm. um, we've had several good trips up there. And you know, we get to talk while we're on the bus. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's a real good time. It's a long day, mm -hmm. but you know, it's once a year we get to go up there. Mm -hmm. We go to the Apple Orchard. Uh, we make small trips around the area here, mm -hmm. but we go on long trips too. And uh, Becky got to go up there because one of the seniors. Drove her van and I rode with them 
and she really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You know, even if they're handicapped, we want them to be able to enjoy it as well as the rest of us mm -hmm. do. So, okay. you know, if, if we can, and that's my goal is to see that all the seniors can go and enjoy it as well as the rest of us. Thank you. Any of the um, help the senior, the town of Scottsville can give us, you know, we appreciate it. Well, Is there anything in particular, like you need a kitchen or you need a Yeah, you know, well, we need a kitchen area. Kitchen we need two bathrooms because okay. we, we do have several men in our group. And, um, you know, it's open to men and women. Um, there's no age limit set, you know, on, on who can count. As far as I'm concerned, anybody can count. But as you get older, you want to be able to, to oh, yeah. get yeah. with people that are around your own age. Yeah. And we talk um, this week coming up, Jeff, right there, Jeff Wesson, he's real good at painting. He's going to teach you the rest of us how to paint. Right. <laughs> and we're going to do, you know, we're going to do that. and. Um, that's a lot of fun mm -hmm. to learn how to do that. We have crafts. Yes, sir. Charlotte, have you seen the, um, these citizens, your core group that used to be here at Scottsdale? Um, are they all going up or just some of them? Just some of them. Not all of us. Not all of and us. And why would you say that is because of the distance or the location? Yeah, because of the distance. See, when it was over here, we have 50 some people. Now, some of them are going up there because they want to continue to be with the seniors, but some of us chose to stay here because it's, uh, I mean, that's another six miles you got to drive. And some of us just don't want to drive that extra six miles. And we feel like the job didn't even give us the consideration to ask us if we wanted to go. Of the 33 apartments back here, all of those people are seniors. Uh, I, I um, yeah, except for two Did you that have are in that building. From them? No, we. Uh, I live in that building, and those job did not ask any of us in that building. Did we want to go but they to would the come, senior? They would come to your senior so the meetings. The job that when they when they moved the building, they just moved it. They, yeah. There was no. But Very five years ago, let's say two years ago, for example. They they were talking about it and they said, you know, we're gonna do this. It wasn't up to us, it was something they decided they were gonna do. Okay, it was a decision. What I'm trying to get at is you've got, you know, at least 30 people, like you said, they could walk around the corner. Did right. they walk around the corner? Yeah, they most of them so did walk around so that's the corner. 30 people right there. Right. 34. Okay. There's 34 apartments in there. And there's and less participation from that group. There's very few go up there because okay. I personally have not been up there because I, I told them when they moved up there, I was not going. Okay. That's um, what I was getting. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, from what I understand, the new director up there, <laughs> I've been told that she treats them like they're children. I'm 62 years old, I'm not a child, and I'm not gonna be treated like it. When I was two years old, you could treat me like a child. I'm not a child, I'm a grown person. You go treat me like a grown person. Um, there's a lot of them that feel that way. They don't want to be treated like that. Um, and you know, and when they're here at the Skipper's Club, they get treated like they're grown. They're welcome to come down there. Um, everybody that comes in there, I try to speak to everybody that comes in there. I go around the room, talk to them, we play bingo, we play swap. You bring something you don't like, and somebody else brings something that they don't like, and you might like what they brought. So we swap, it's a swap thing. And um, we've done that twice. We've played bingo, everybody likes bingo. And we're going to have some other things. We have games, we have cards, um, we have puzzles, and we're going to come up with some other ideas of 
fun things that we can do while we're at the skipper's meeting. We're there from 10 to about 1. Um, we talk in the mornings and we do the games and stuff in the afternoons after lunch. We have our lunch every Thursday. We go four times a, a month, which is once a week. And it gives people a chance to get, it, get out, meet with other people, meet new people. Um, and so far, everybody that has come, um, we try to get everybody to bring them guests. And if they bring them guests, they and their guests get put in a basket. And in a month or so, we're going to pull them out, and both of them will get a prize for that. Um, and we try to make it interesting. And if anybody has any ideas, all they got to do is bring it up. We have four officers. Uh, I'm, the, I'm the president, then there's a vice president, then there's a secretary, and then there's the treasurer. And, you know, we vote on these every year. But this year, because we didn't have nothing going on last year, they decided to keep the same officer. Next year, I promise I'm not going to be the president again. <laughs> well, we'll... we'll um... <clears throat> Matt and I will keep you informed of anything that this group does that can help, and you keep me and you keep us informed. I will. Welcome to come I back will. once a month and give us a report. I will. Okay. I'll be happy to. All right. Thank, Thank you, Charlotte. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, any other public? Uh, yes, come forward. Name and. I'm Dora Weston. I live um, in Buckingham County in the town of Scottsville. And my husband and I have been a part of the Senior Center now for a few years. Um, and one thing a lot of people don't know is that Skipper's Club has been around. They, they were the first Senior Center in the town of Scottsville. And uh, they met at the, the Methodist Church, the library, and then went over here with, with Java. And so a lot of people, not me because I wasn't around back then, but a lot of people have that history. And that's part of what they want to reserve is they, they don't want to, to the Skipper's Club itself to be forgotten about and, and changed. And, uh, and it is Skipper's Club that did all those uh, trips that Charlotte was talking about. And we did a lot of the parties and stuff like that. And a lot of people just don't want that to disappear. And if we're part of, if they put the Esmont and Scottsville together, it'd be very hard for Skipper's Club to continue. So that's one of the reasons why we wanted to keep in Scottsville and keep the Skipper's Club as it was. And I know you asked about the facility and what we need really is a facility that's very accessible with accessible bathrooms and a kitchen and room to, to, to do all the, the games and stuff. So sort of like what we had over there, yeah. mm -hmm. except the bathrooms need, you know, to be, uh, fixed up there, they were in pretty poor shape. <clears throat> but that's that's what we're look, we're, we really need to make it easy for all the seniors to get in and out and all that, and, you know, and, and that was quite accessible. And this, you know, the Methodist Church is, is usable, but it's not quite as user friendly for mm -hmm. wheelchairs and stuff like that as the other building was. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time to, to share that with us. Yes, sir. Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard Van Arsdale. My family and I just moved here two months ago from Chicago to Esmont. And we've moved here for me to work and serve as the chaplain of the Albemarle Charlottesville Regional Jail. Um, and it's with an organization called Good News Jail and Prison Ministry. Dan Britsko and his family have been a warm welcome to us. We've only known them for two months, but he's the one who told me about this meeting and invited me here. And I'm really here simply to introduce myself, to let you guys know that I'm here, 
and that I want to serve this city as a direct uh, connection to the jail. Now, the statistics from the court system right now are saying that one in four people at some point in their life will be a part of the judicial system, whether that be a friend of yours, a distant relative, an immediate relative, or yourself, pretty much everyone knows someone who has either been in jail or is in jail today. In just two months of me working in the jail, the Albemarle Charlottesville Regional Jail, I have already met a handful of men and women who are from Scottsville. And when they are released, they will come back home to Scottsville. There was one guy just two weeks ago who I was talking and praying with and he's hanging onto his bars in his cell and he's crying because this was the first 4th of July parade that he's missed with his family. And he was asking about it and about the fireworks and I told him, well, there was no fireworks, but the parade was great. Granted, I'm from Chicago and so I'm used to marching bands and more formal things, not semi trucks and tractors, <laughs> but it was great. And so there's already this direct connection in my own eyes with my job, the ministry and our home here in Scottsville. Now I know firsthand how important this ministry is. I'm not going to share my whole backstory and testimony, but I will say that at 16 years old, I was arrested for the first time. And by the time I was 19 years old, I was arrested and sentenced to nine years in prison for being a part of a drug deal gone bad. My wife and I, we've had many opportunities back home to speak at high schools. And one thing I always share with the kids is to remind them that you will become like those who you continually associate with. I mean, it's a universal truth for young and old. And I had to learn that the hard way. But it was a chaplain and other volunteers coming into the jail that God used to catch my attention. It was their presentation of the gospel that God used in my own life. And that is why precisely we don't just provide education in jails and prisons. Education is great, it's necessary, but if all we do is provide education, then all we will get is more educated criminals. We have to address the, the heart issue and the moral compass helping people to truly see and understand that the way they are living is wrong, and not just in the eyes of society, but in the eyes of God. And so, just like God used a chaplain in my life, now by God's grace, I am serving as that chaplain for these counties of all places. <laughs> and the last thing I'll say is that if we truly want to see change in society, then we have to start with those who are destroying it. And so I'm grateful for you all. And I look forward to getting to know each of you better in the days to come. And may God bless you guys. Okay. And Van, just, just one thing before you finish. Um, for, first of all, thank you for sharing. But one thing I will just say, not going into any details, but just, just this weekend, I was talking to somebody from this area and their son is behind bars, actually a young man that I knew who grew up here in Scottsville. And it was a reminder and one of the things that I think, Van, that you've already helped me to understand would be just the connection of things that we can do from any approach, whether we understand helping young people not to make poor choices. On the other hand, trying to help people in jail who have those desperate moments when they first go to jail and they're not only their lives are shattered, but the lives of the people they victimize. And then on the other hand, helping them come out and so to find life again once they come out and it, it was interesting that you said that point of you've already met several people from this area and and the thing that you said is and i'm just going to repeat one thing you said to me is so if people are aware of a circumstance of somebody who is in jail or going into jail or actually coming out that you're you are happy to help them or talk to them or do whatever you can do to be helpful in yeah that. that's why i'm here that's why i want to introduce myself is to make that connection so let me know like i want to serve the city in that way you have that direct connection to individuals or even to the jail and it is fascinating how many people you'll meet in jail and prison who are really nice individuals, nice people when they're sober, mm -hmm. you know, when they're thinking clearly. And so it is a unique ministry. Um, and I am serious. I really do look forward to getting to know each of you individually, hopefully 
know, if we can find time to meet in the days to come. We thank you for taking the time to come and introduce yourself. We welcome you to the community. And since you have a direct relationship with Dan, if you think of some way we can help you, just uh, let Dan know and he will bring it before the rest of us. Otherwise, just call us anytime you think about something that uh, we might help you with. Thank you, Mayor. Okay, thank, thank, you. You. thank, you. thank you. Any other members of the public that wish to speak? Yeah, I see a Supervisor Price on the big screen. So before we move on, if there's no further public input, we'll ask Supervisor Price what she's like to uh, speak to us about this evening. Thank you, Mayor. I appreciate it. There are a couple of particular items I do want to bring up. The first one is I want to share the sadness and sympathy for the families and the victims of the five serious accidents that have taken place near, Scotts, near and in Scottsville over the last week. I wanna thank Jack Maxwell. Um, he's been working really hard on um, helping to coordinate communication between me and other residents. And I've been working with the Albemarle County Police Department, um, Major Reeves, and we are looking to schedule a town hall meeting to talk about um, traffic safety down in the area. Um, and so, um, I mean, that's clearly something that is on everyone's mind right now. The other thing, um, I, I had a nice conversation with your chief of police this morning about the impact of the state's um, lack of resources for um, taking mental health care patients to the appropriate facilities and basically requiring our law enforcement officers to spend time at a general hospital with those individuals while we wait for them to get a, um, a, a bed at the appropriate facility. And of course that has a significant public um, safety impact as it's taking patrol officers off the street and requiring them to, to basically just sit at a hospital for a while. And uh, I do plan on bringing both of these items up um, at our Board of Supervisors meeting on Wednesday um, in, in hopes of generating additional interest and support um, uh, on the latter one for the county to uh, file some communications with the state to at least end our voice to those other voices they are hearing from that they need to come up with a way to get those resources. It's been a longstanding problem and it's reached a crisis point. Um, and other than that, I don't have any particular things, Mayor. I appreciate it. I do look forward to uh, seeing you and and anyone else at the uh, SCAN March on Thursday evening. And uh, just looking forward for more events to uh, to attend down in Scottsville. Thank you for this opportunity. Okay, and I'm, I'm here, if anyone has any questions of me, I'm, I'm here to try and answer them or get the answer for you. Any questions for Supervisor Price? No questions, but you know, I, I was chatting with Chief Bullinkle the other day about the the mental, um, the state mental hospitals, five of which I believe are closing this year as a result of funding and lack of staffing, which is a lot. And the burden that this will place on our police officers as it relates to, you know, staying with patients at hospitals sounds um, like a significant burden on our own officers, which you know, we only have one or two on duty at any one time. And uh, Bullwinkle expressed to me that some officers are staying there as long as 21 hours. Um, you know, and there are like four Albemarle cops there doing that. Um, and so I, I guess I'm interested in what we can do as a town or a county uh, and what other local municipalities are doing to advocate for the funding to get these places open. I mean, I know staffing is another issue, um, but I, it's, it's a significant burden on localities and municipalities. Um, so I, I'm interested to hear more about things, we actions we can take as public bodies well, I, thank you, Counselor. And um, I, it's my understanding, and I, I may be incorrect, but that the facilities themselves are not closing so much as they are, at least for a period of time, unable to take new patients coming in because of the lack of um, personnel staffing. But but I will confirm that. Um, I think if the town council was um, was so inclined, um, perhaps something similar to what I'm going to ask our supervisors to do, which is to to basically communicate through a letter to the governor, um, to the state legislature, that this is a crisis situation that needs and sufficient funding in order to be able for those facilities to have the personnel they need to be able to take care of these patients. Because it's 
it is a significant public safety issue as a result of the impact and the demands being placed on law enforcement, but it also is a significant health issue for those individuals who actually need to be in the proper facilities and receive the care that they need. So it is a multifaceted issue that needs to be addressed. Thank you, Counselor. Any other questions? Uh, I too have met with the chief. I think uh, Vice Mayor Malusi has done also. We had a chat or uh, well, uh, phone conversation between the chief, myself, and uh, Mr. Bowling the other day that went on for about an hour talking about this subject. And uh, I'm working on a letter to uh, elected officials, put it that way, uh, regarding our concern for this matter. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you for being with us this evening. Um, Thank you. As, as uh, Supervisor Price uh, mentioned, and I will just uh, publicize it for a second, SCAN, Scottsdale Center for Art and the Natural Environment, uh, is having a, a, a remote uh, meeting uh, over at their property uh, across from the cemetery on hardware. Thursday at 6.30 to 7.30. There'll be everybody's invited to come, find out all about SCAN that you don't know about SCAN. Uh, uh, walk around the property. There's 13 acres over there that Bobby Spencer left to SCAN, uh, gave to SCAN some years ago. And uh, it, it is really a nice place. There's nothing else to take a walk. So uh, that's Thursday at 6.30 at the SCAN property across from the cemetery on hardware. Uh, usually at, uh, I know when uh, former Mayor Gill is with us tonight, uh, when, when uh, she was uh, uh, sitting up here in this chair, she would make an end of the year uh, report. Um, as you all recall, our last meeting was a marathon session and I did not feel like it was necessary to, <laughs> to take time to make an end of the year report when we had everything else going on that we had going on. So bear with me for a couple of minutes and I will, uh, I will just uh, make a few comments uh, uh, regarding my first year as mayor. And uh, needless to say, my first year uh, as mayor was not what I had envisioned it to be. And I suppose Mayor Jackson Beal was the only other mayor, the last person to serve in this office during a pandemic. Uh, so having a, a year of virtual council meetings was certainly new to me and perhaps some of you. Our planning commission and the architectural review board also had to conduct business in this manner, but we persevered and performed the duties we were elected to do. With businesses having to adapt and face prospects of loss of income, the town faced the same possibility. Our primary concern became the budget and how we were going to make up for these losses, that, uh, the losses we expected to face. Our staff voluntarily, uh, voluntarily worked uh, reduced hours. Uh, we didn't do any unnecessary spending. Uh, thanks to Thomas and Matt, a plan was made to get us through the crisis, uh, but we were still concerned. And then came the CARES Act, and suddenly we were doing a whole bunch of money. But with that whole bunch of money uh, came a lot of strings attached in a specific time frame for using that money. But thanks to the hard work of these people up here, uh, we were able to utilize the CARES funds, not only for the benefit of our residents and businesses, but also for the members of the surrounding community. So after the CARES money was utilized, we once again found ourselves in the position of having to take a hard look at our budget. The subject of a town, now listen to this because this is important. The subject of a town real estate tax came up. We all felt that to spring that on the town residents without having proper hearings or information was not the right thing to do. But I can almost guarantee that next budget cycle, when we start talking about the budget, we will be talking about a real estate tax. So keep that in mind. So it's not gonna be a surprise when we talk about it next spring. It doesn't mean we're gonna implement one next year, but we're gonna be talking about it again. Because this, um, after the CARES money, um, we got the ARP money. 
we weren't expecting it right then. We were again in sort of dire straits as far as our budget was concerned. And we were looking at, that's why we were looking at a real estate tax. Then all of a sudden the ARP money shows up. And these, this money came to town with very few strings attached and a significantly longer time frame in which to use it. So again, these six people up here put on their thinking caps and we have come up or they came up with, uh, with plans and uh, ways to utilize the funds that we have been given over the next few years. And they're all for the benefit of the local people here in Scottsville and the business. Um, so the mayor's job is not limited to work sessions or conducting monthly council meetings. Uh, some of the other things I do, I may, uh, regularly meet with Supervisor Price to ensure that she and the Board of Supervisors understand Scottsville's wants, needs, and concerns. I talk with Matt and Thomas almost every day. The Vice, Vice Mayor, um, Matt, Thomas, and I usually meet prior to work sessions. I have regular meetings with the Chief of Police regarding the safety and security of our town. And I've tried to make it a point to meet every new business owner in town and uh, introduce myself and welcome them to our town. I continue to serve on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Super Board and the Board of the Scottsdale Museum. But while I do all those things, it is the council and the staff that really do the work of the town. It is council that makes the decision. It's the planning commission, the ARB, that see that the town remains a historical venue. And, and, and it is while encouraging growth, the growth that is well planned and thought out. And then there is our staff that's constantly finding resources that benefit the town. Thanks to Thomas, whose research has brought us a DMV select office. Thanks to Matt, who is constantly finding grants that provide funds for projects and purchases for which we might not have available funding. And thanks to council, these six people up here, our committees, the citizens of Scottsville who volunteer to work on committees and commissions, our police department, and others who put in long hours to ensure that Scottsville continues to be a safe and welcoming community of friendly and accepting people who want nothing but the best for the town they call home. So that is my report. Um, any questions? Mr. Mayor, I just want to say that's very nice. So we're well, thankful for your- You guys are the ones that do all the hard work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, you know, I spent, I, I, I don't think I don't spend as many hours working on town things as Laura does. She is overly involved, and sometimes I can tell it's, she's a little stressed about some of the things that are going on because she doesn't get the help she needs to have from the community. And I know everybody has things on their uh, their schedules; they don't have time to volunteer. But you know, we really need more town volunteers on all our committees. And, uh, you know, we're all volunteers up here, basically, so we need more volunteers. So anyhow, let's move on uh, to reports of Charter Committees, Planning Commission, and Architectural Review Board. And we'll start on the end with Lindsay with Planning Commission. Sure. Well, um, some of you were here for our last marathon Planning Commission Town Council joint session. Um, and some of those remaining items will be discussed further down in our agenda. So I will not take up any time between those. Um, but the last planning commission meeting, we simply did a reorganization. Now that we have gone through so many major points of some uh, zoning text amendments and whatnot to see what we now think are the more important things to address as we continue to revise and assess and update. So I don't have a ton of information to share right now, but we'll be looking at things such as parking and dark sky, um, making sure that any new businesses have uh, appropriate lighting that's not shining right into bedrooms. Uh, so much more coming on that front and I will leave it there for now. Thank you, any questions for Lindsay? Mr. Bullock? Yep. Um, so at our meeting of the ARB last week, um, we made some uh, good progress with a property owner, a property owner of venture, I guess, 
who's bringing up bakery to Scottsdale, which is exciting. Down in the corner of Bruce's drugstore location. Um, so we approved a vent, a vent on the side of that building. The door used to be on that side of the building too. You can see it bricked in. Man, cool. So it's kind of like the built environment a little bit evidence of prior usage. And so the new one is a ventilation system for a bakery. It's too great. So we have Brittany Cobb here at the Valley. Um, prove that to move forward. We also have Mark Harris, who's a local landscaper. We've been trying to get the Dollar General to make good on their landscaping plan from a long time ago. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. A long time ago. Uh, and this most recent one is only probably two years in a bank. Um, but he's a local landscaper with a plan for a low maintenance pollinator friendly uh, landscaping down at the Dollar General and hopefully um, we'll get some traction with that, but it's good to meet with him to make sure those plans are still um, shovel ready for the fall. Um, we also got plans from Truist Bank, who will be taking over the bb and location after a recent merger. Um, this has some planning commission overlap because the sign they want to put in has a, a, a sign with interior lighting that might be garish. Um, and so we're interested in the planning commission's work to articulate a proper lighting uh, ordinance in town, we don't really have one, um, but that's a prominent location and we want to make sure that the lighting is appropriate for drivers coming around the corner as well as residents um, across the street. <laughs> Thinking about you. Uh, we're also working on enforcement of properties that are rated, that were rated poor this year and this year's inventory, meaning unsealed or at risk of structural um, damage. And we've gotten, we've made some progress with I think four property owners at this point, one project, there are actually two, I think two or three that have actually been remediated and others that we have um, plans for remediation, but others that have not known this at all, even after having been served formal notice. So at our next meeting, the architectural review board, we're gonna figure out which of those properties to move forward with um, in terms of legal action to get the properties shored up. Um, this year we had 18 properties rated for, which is more than, I don't know, maybe ever, um, and a number that had become worse with time, especially in my tenure in the last few years. And some of them clustered. And so we, we really kind of got a town issue here with some of these buildings, a number of them being historic, some of them being some of the oldest in, in town. Um, so we will be evaluating which of those to move forward with based on sort of the location of the property, the number of properties owned by the property owner, as well as the historic nature of the building. So more about that next month. That's where we are. Thank you so much. Any questions for Mr. Bullock? Mr. Gritzko. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. There's a, a couple things I would like to mention, both for the council and also for the public that's here. The first would have to do with a meeting that I had with our mayor and vice mayor a couple of months ago. And the idea behind that meeting was my own recognition that the parks committee over the last year and a half, two years, had become more of a functioning um, ad hoc maintenance committee, so to speak. And we ended up doing a lot of focus in our gatherings was on aspects of cleanup, which are very well warranted and they were helpful things to do. And as I talked to the mayor and the vice mayor in that meeting, one of the things that I have really desired to return to is to further develop, especially some aspects of the Van Cleef nature area, which has kind of been my passion for a number of years and in a sense getting their permission to do that so i want to i want to say this both to the town councilors and also to the public that that is my intention of putting more of a focus on that project and seeing what we can advance within those 63 acres there are a number of different directions that we can go and some of it is to look at our principal partners who've helped us over the years that being said, and talking to our vice mayor about the maintenance issues, which are significant and ongoing in the town and recognizing that when the parks committee took over, you might say the beautification aspects of the town, it's not that we're totally returning them back, but it's more saying the focus of the committee is going to be more on the development of the Van Cleef nature area. With that in mind, the second point I want to mention would be we had a meeting about three weeks ago with the 
Department of Wildlife Resources team that were here. And they were looking at two things, both the James River and also the Van Cleef Nature Area, Scottsville Lake. Uh, one of those uh, is gonna be a follow-up meeting that I'll, I think I'll let our town administrator mention something about in a moment, which is the follow-up to the James River access, which is really a significant issue. And our vice mayor, I think is gonna be leading up and solving all those problems. What next week you think? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we'll be looking at that. But I was going to mention one of the things that came from that meeting also was a recognition of how do we move forward on one of the things we were close to getting a few years ago, which is a dock in Scottsdale Lake. We had had an agreement with, with them at the time. And at the last moment that fell through because of some red tape on their end. From meeting with them a few weeks ago, we see a path forward. That path forward will, will be given the new landscape that they have, what was recommended basically is we're gonna to need to come up with a design for the dock. And once we come up with a design for the dock, they will, you might say through their own red tape, work that through and likely be able to help us with, us with the funding. But the start of that will need to come from us, so to speak. So you'll see in the coming weeks and months, some movement on that project. Where that stems from is that there's a desire in making Scottsville Lake to be more accessible of people of all mobilities. In fact, that would be a very much an interest of people in the senior center to try to have a dock that's there and also to make access to the lake itself and part of the designs are to make it more handicapped accessible or barrier free. And those will be focuses overall with the Van Creek nature area. So just wanted to give you that update, excited about that. Looking forward to also as we see an opportunity as we meet in person and as we've all been a little bit, I should say a little bit greatly impacted by COVID-19, I'm excited to see efforts move forward again with the committee. So please, as the mayor has just said, those of you who are interested in some volunteer efforts that we have or in serving on some planning capacity, feel free to give us a contact. Mr. Mayor. Okay, thank you, sir. Any other questions for Dan? All right, that is a real asset we have up here and uh, we need to take care of it. Um, you wanna go next or you want me to start down the other end? Um, I'm happy to go next. Okay. <laughs> so um, a number of different things to report on and I'll, I'll try to succinctly report out. Um, first is Fastwell Farmers Market. Um, I'll have town staff elaborate a bit further, but the quick and dirty is we do have a new uh, manager of the farmers market. Um, that's been hired. So we're very, very excited to introduce them a bit later. Um, for events committee, please mark your calendars. Tuesday, August 10th, the Charlottesville band will be performing at the Canal Basin Square outdoor concert. It is free. It's an hour long. Please join us. Please tell your friends, your family, your neighbors. Um, we'd love to give them a good showing. Um, again, it's a free concert. We'll collect donations for them. Um, they, they really are excited to come and perform in, in Scottsville. And, um, so uh, look forward to passing that forward. What, what time is it? Seven o'clock. Okay. I believe that's, do yes. I have that date wrong? Or 17th, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. 17th, there we go. Um, the other big thing with events committee, you may have all noticed, but we had three events that took place within a two week time frame. Um, Bateau Festival, and Pollinator Festival, and July 3rd, i.e. 4th. Um, so just a huge thanks to the community members to our many partners that make that possible. That's always a big crunch time for the events committee. Um, those events never change. They are always sort of like tightly together just based on, you know, a uh, long 36 year history for the Bateau Festival, a hundred plus year history for the 4th of July. So we try to keep those traditions moving forward. Um, in government services, we had a lot of good discussion. You've heard quite a bit about the um, concerns with mental health the changes that are that have taken place statewide. So we did have a good lengthy discussion with Chief Bowlingville regarding those concerns. Um, we also are discussing our, um, our town code. We're reviewing the town code um, and trying to improve access to that. That governs many of our committee works as well as the police department and staff work and, and um, would be super helpful for the public to know what those principles are. So we hope that before the year end is done, actually I know before the year end is done, we will have that accessible to all of you. 
um, next meeting within government services, we're gonna be focusing our efforts on capital plan priorities and also town maintenance. Um, we've had a lot of good discussions with many partners on maintenance, get, getting a good um, understanding of what are the reoccurring concerns, what are new concerns, and um, some discussion about coming up with MOUs to make sure that we can address those on an ongoing basis versus always playing catch with those. Um, also government services, um, wanna keep on the agenda for the town council in particular, that this year we'd like to do a follow-up with the Board of Supervisors for a joint meeting in particular to talk about growth area and development area. Why, first and foremost, to improve services for our citizens, and then second, to maintain our support and par partnership with the county employees and, our, and the leaders. Um, specifically, you should see um, some improvements at Canal Basin Square actually this month. I have a volunteer that's gonna do some work on the bateau and passenger boats. And we, are, um, we also have a lead on a um, bateau replacement. So that's mm -hmm. one boat that's not worth fixing, but worth replacing. So you won't see it removed until we have that replacement, but that is in process and we wanted to report that out. Great. And finally, um, just to share another fun event. Um, so Scan um, Mayor shared the Thursday evening event. There is also a Valley Streetscape, um, which is a call for proposals from anyone in the community to do submissions to fill vacant storefront windows with creative ideas. It doesn't, you don't have to be an artist um, to do that. That deadline is this Friday. So please check out Scan's website, Valley Streetscape, if you're interested in more details and that deadline is Friday. Thank okay, you Thank much. you. Any questions for the vice mayor? Mr. Munson. Yeah, you know, I'm developing a couple of um, interesting developments. Um, uh, um, Matt primarily and I have um, applied for a grant from the state of Virginia uh, to do a small business development contest here in Scottsdale. So the idea is we'll get a grant from the um, from the state. We'll be able to use that money to um, call for, for people who are interested in starting a small business in Scottsdale. So there'll be a, 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 a program, several multiple week program where uh, people who are interested uh, can come and learn about how to write a business plan. So how you do market research, and how to write a, how you write a, you know, a pro form, a balance sheet, and profit loss statement. And sort of how, really, how are you gonna, gonna plan the operations of your business and how you're gonna market out to people. Um, so be able to help you actually write a business plan. And then at the end of that process, um, we're going to have a, uh, a group of four to five um, successful business or successful business people uh, judge those business plans and the two that um, that um, are, are judged most uh, successful or have the greatest potential for success will get $15,000 grants to start the business. Um, so uh, we, we got the application in for that last week, and we should know in September, I think. Um, if we've got it, and it looks like we have a really good chance of that happening. So if you know anyone who's interested in starting a business, um, point us at what with the matter on it, and uh, we'll can give you some more information in the application for getting in on that project. You do not have to live in Scottsdale. Um, to, to, to participate in this, you just have to open the business in the town side. Um, secondly, we've, uh, with the help of SCAN, um, we have started a movie night outside movie night here in Scottsville, Saturday nights, um, have been the last two. And Saturday nights, we're going to, the next one will be the second, uh, or sorry, the first uh, Saturday in August, which I believe is the second of August. Um, Bring a chair, bring some snacks, hang out outside. We project it right outside of the wall out there, and uh, the generally cools off to be pretty comfortable. And by that point, then, uh, it's kind of a lot of fun. So we've had families and individuals and all sorts of folks come. So uh, get the word out and come on down. Thank you. Any questions for Stuart? Mr. Payne, any reports tonight? Um, the public safety and health related meetings by August. No July meeting. Yeah. The first one was August. Um, I believe it's uh, Chief Bowling who is here who may want to let the public know about uh, the procurement uh, of the new vehicle and initially um, new personnel. Uh, mm -hmm. Jordan Matt will come there to be involved in both. If you have anything to add to that, I'm happy to. Yes, sir. Thank you very much.
much. Um, you're right, our police department is um, fully staffed and fully equipped after um, personnel turnover and vehicle losses in the past year. So we welcome Officer Dustin Herndon to the force, coming to us with um, many years of local and community experience, both volunteer and career. Um, he fills our part-time position that um, really is the two full-time officers that we have. We're also um, uh, loan approved, uh, title registered, and about to take delivery of the new um, Ford Explorer model SUV. Um, Well-equipped for these standards using state bids um, and funded 75% by USDA grants. Um, so that's an excellent way to bring modern vehicles into the state. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Payne or Matt? Okay, then we'll move on to item, uh, the second half of item five, progress report from here. And I suppose that's why former Mayor Gill is in the audience tonight. <laughs> yeah, speak into the microphone. <laughs> okay, so we have the slides. While she's waiting, let's just mention that in that first round of money that we got, the CARES money here put a lot of their share of that to good use. They provided uh, mask and, and sanitizer and to all the businesses and, and just uh, went all around the area uh, trying to ensure the safety of our population. So we appreciate it. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for being with us this evening. I'm going to start with uh, rapid yeah, I need to see. Yeah. You got me? Yep. Okay. So the rapid response COVID-19 grant that was awarded to us through the efforts of Dr. Preston Reynolds. And uh, for those of you who don't know what GIDI stands for, it's the Global Infection Disease Institute. And basically the students could not travel internationally. So we benefited quite a bit um, during COVID from their lack of travel. Global research happening right here. Absolutely. <laughs> Slide, please. So I'm going to start here. This is um, part of a larger presentation that two other um, GIDI students did for us. And this is the breakdown of the survey results. So basically, um, uh, 60 to 69, 70, 79, 50 to 79, that's our biggest demographic group that actually participated in the survey. And um, we can go to the next one. And quick stats, um, incidents, you have a little over 12% that um, have been tested positive for COVID, and then almost 40% knew someone who had COVID. Now I'm going to say this um, survey ended in April, so we don't have any new stats on them. And the risk, almost 61%, they have been diagnosed with a condition that places them at a greater risk of COVID. Uh, that would be hypertension, obesity, diabetes, other, lung disease, COPD, cancer, kidney disease, and a blood disorder. So the concerns that came across in the survey is the public's disregard for the, for the severity of COVID. Biggest was the non-compliance with the mask mandate and a little bit with um, social distancing. Not that much with the vaccination because of course vaccinations were just getting going when we ended this. Next please. So the concerns people mostly were very much concerned with themselves contracting the virus and then their family contracting the virus, the ability to obtain PPE, which is, I have information on that for you, what the town and was able to do together. Um, it surprised us that employment and financial concerns weren't 
as great as they are here. What are the concerns about schooling? But that comes in a little bit later. Next, please. So resource importance. The most important access to housing, water, which I'm going to report on water as well, food, face masks, medical care, and cleaning supplies. What they really needed access to is, and this is, I don't think, first we are any surprise to us is transportation, reliable cell coverage, reliable internet, um, family support supplies me a little bit. Next, please. So, what did we do with this information? So, what I just gave you was we had that information. Um, that as we were reviewing the survey results that they came in, and we found that the masks, the hand sanitizer, all of those things were um, a major concern to folks. So when we got the first round of CARES funds, the mayor approached me and said, hey, can we do anything? And I sat through our steering committee and with Matt, and through a partnership, we were, able to get 5,000 KN95 masks, 20,000 medical style masks, 20 gallons of hand sanitizer. We um, created the clear guide and we printed several handouts for our kids and outreach events. Next, please. That's a little too big. <laughs> So we, we had initially our kickoff was two take a hike days, one in Esmont, and they had about 40 people join in. Um, the health department went, Albemarle police were there, and they social distanced. Um, and, and that's Peggy there in the green mask. She's my um, front of She and I are the coaches here. Next, please. And then we did a take a hike day in Scottsville, which Council of Bullock helped us with as we did um, our we did tie-dye face masks and had a booth. It was very successful. We also had um, Denise Williams sitting up by the Doug's Maytag mm -hmm. so Van could take people on a tour of Van Fleet. So this year's Take a Hike Day, I'm really hoping that we get lots of people out, not just in Scottsville or Esmond, but in Urbana. And even if you want to hike um, a trail off the Blue Ridge Parkway, just get out and walk. So we want this person. So you're saying, just so I'm clear, if somebody were to say to me, Dan, go take a hike, I should refer to that as a positive comment that you're in, in, in some cases in some case, okay i'm just it didn't i didn't always take it that way that's what i was just trying to clarify you're going to take a hike and take people with you okay <laughs> you know <laughs> next so these are some of our volunteers i can pick you up this was not the same night so Peggy, you know she's in all of that but Laura helped us, and basically what we did is we took these gallon jugs, kitchen, and we still have things left, and we filled these. It's kind of fun, And this was part of a kit that we handed out to people. Um, and we're out of this, so it might be more if something happens in the fall. So uh, at this point, we had coordinated 16 outreach events in which we handed out kits that contained hand sanitizer, masks, um, literature, and goodwill. We also had 49 volunteers that have completed 175 hours uh, volunteer service. We cannot have my volunteers. I don't know. <laughs> Keep them doing good stuff. <laughs> we distributed one thing that we really wanted to do was get um, kits in our businesses. So we actually distributed with the help of um, the Chamber of Commerce, 
36 COVID medication kits to businesses in Scottsville, Buckingham, Nelson, and Esmond. And that's Teresa Radford, the parent. She's been, we're all kind of working. Eric LaFontaine, who helped distribute. We also were able to, with um, a partnership with the Blue Ridge Health Department, they provided the monitors and posters, and then um, other things that we had the masks, hand sanitizer, we created kits to go to churches. So I know that Richard Tom, um, Presbyterian Church, and um, we handed out, gosh, he had distributed 34 of the 74 kits that went out. Another thing we did was um, under uh, Teresa Radford's watch, we handed out 40 home COVID mitigation kits. And this was for people who actually had COVID someone in their homes. And we used, we worked with um, Central Virginia Health, Serp Health yeah, Services, by Glass Race, which is an organization filled with the Nancy School Community Center and um, the town of Scottsdale. And we helped sign people up to get vaccinations. And this was done, the, the kit that we handed out to everybody, it was um, Central Virginia Health Department, Virginia Health Department, again, the town here, and I, there's another group that I can do. <laughs> and then we, of course, started our own Zoom um, meetings and Peggy has been running uh, here COVID community response meeting. And at this point, we had done 24, but um, every other week, and she's still doing it. So uh, it was through these meetings that we collaborated with the Blue Ridge Health Department to get 280 rural residents. That was the first one that they did out of UNC school. That's great. And this brings us to where we're headed, mental health concerns, which we heard um, a little bit about tonight, and um, anxiety during COVID was pretty high, depression, insufficient rest, anger, uh, lack of self-esteem. So this is something that we'll be working on and Next slide should be part of what we're going to do. Yes. So we work with another UVA grad student on a mindfulness uh, program. And she created, uh, th this is a very large study, which we won't go into, but basically um, exercises that we can do in our park. So it's a it's park, Tudia Creek. BCNA and Doria Park. And so we'll be printing out, we're going to combine it. We're not doing separate booklets for each place, but it has different things you can do and then um, some things you can read. And this is just um, to give credit to Maya Barusi and Chris, Chris Neal, her um, instructor, and of course, Frank Beats, who is very wise. This is the cover of the mindfulness exercises. Next, please. And this is um, the cover of our peer guide, which has it's a 12 page guide that has um, several <coughs> things from Charlottesville to building, uh, not just health related things, but also um, where you can do the food families are and mental health offerings and things like that. And this is what we, this is the inside cover of the year guide. So you can see how we did both the mixing the English and the Spanish together. And for an event, <laughs> now we get to the fun. So, um, 
partnership with CBHS, UVA, and the Charlottesville Free Clinic, they are bringing uh, community health workers to the, the area. They hired uh, Betsy Payton to oversee this implementation. And on August the 8th, from 4 to 6 at the farmer's market, you can get to come and meet Betsy and other people that would have tables there. And if we want a table, Know, about the parks. We'll be there at uh, Doug Bush and Ben Pay. We will be playing some crossing fields. And I think there's one more slide. And this is what here we'll be concentrating on next. And this is part of the second part of the. COVID-19 grant that Preston was able to secure going through a series of focus groups with people from the four counties within you know, that 10 to 15 mile radius of Scott. And we're working on that now. Questions? Okay, any questions for former Mayor Gill? No, but thank you so much for the presentation. And sincere thank you for all your hard work of the last yeah. year, it's invaluable. I, I think uh, I echo that. Um, if if here hadn't been around when this all started happening, we would basically have been at a loss as to which direction to go. And because of here, a lot of good things happen. We're just getting started. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So August the eighth, free ice cream. That should that should be a draw. Thank you, uh, former Mayor Gill. Any, uh, let's see, uh, item number six is, uh, I have asked Matt to explain this uh, one for us. Thank you very much. Uh, in attending our local emergency and preparing to be in this format, um, we of course still have the online participation, which is helpful for public comment presentations from folks like Google by the price who is a little bit further away. Um, our attorney's advice reminds us of the old law um, in place pre-pandemic, which now governs our conduct during COVID. Um, the old version of the law requires physical attendance in this format, unless the town has specifically adopted a rule allowing members to join your discussions remote and in the past we didn't have the technology to let that happen so we didn't have any such rules now we do so if you want to join other Virginia localities to have this kind of language in place and create an electronic means for a member to occasionally join the meetings if they're um, ill or have personal benefits that prevent them from joining you in far back in the time you can do that um, many localities around us have these kinds of rules already. When they had the college in place, they weren't do it. God bless you, we didn't, and now we do. So, this is the legal framework that if one of you is missing the meeting and unable to attend, we can do it. Um, without this kind of working with the legal we'll do that and have to do it professionally in order to participate in this. Uh, this taxpayer is your friend's recommendation and a flexible tool with the technology of it. Okay. Questions for Matt? Yeah, under um, the whereas B, where it says due to a personal matter and identifies with specificity the nature of the personal matter, what, what is that? I mean, I know what that means, but so, so, like, if I can't make a meeting or think I can't. Do I then have to submit the reason that I'm not attending? To, to disclose on record what's happening, why, why yeah. you can't do that. Okay. I'm, I'm sick, I'm traveling on business, family emergency. Um, the, the public needs to know why you're not there. Okay. Is there any way that the mayor or administrator can say that's not a valid reason to not be in attendance? I haven't heard one challenge. I've seen examples of this mm -hmm. as given you know, um, medical, family, professional business travel. Sometimes uh, a 
officials are out of their country and participating in the time zone difference. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen those times. Uh, I've never seen one struck as being illegitimate. Mm -hmm. I would, my reading of it would be that you can leave out a qualifying word. Uh, you're going to ask you for a qualifying personal matter to identify. I think it gives you that to say that any person is You're not here, you can get it. Right. And you're also limited to two meters, mm -hmm. so you can only miss two. There's no other thing. Yeah. What happens if what happens if more than two meters are missed or need to be taken? Into the, the absence from the body becomes a problem for the quality. But the meeting can still happen, it just means you're not there. That's right. Yeah. Um, as long as there's a quorum of you, which is four, physically present. Okay. The room with your teacher, that was the threshold of the If the council member is just uh, not showing up, there's a point of the rest of the council can be the How many is that? Is that two? We can. Yeah, there it is. This is one. I'm learning all this the first time. I had no idea. Now, now I know what I'm actually dealing with. We don't have we don't have the uh, I don't have the authority to arrest council people for <laughs> fleeing the state, but at the same time, uh, we can command the constable to go pick you up and bring you here. <laughs> that's a slow the ride down the That's in the ordinance. <laughs> it's uh, government services in the state. So is it is it Mr. Bowling's suggestion that we approve this resolution? If, if, if that flexibility is in the Can I ask one last question about missing two meetings? Is this, would two, is it considered two if it's one work session or one council meeting? Good question. Uh, the question And I have, I also have a question. We've discussed in the past um, the voting guidelines and discussed that if you weren't physically here but participating remotely, that you could participate in discussion but not in the vote. But that's not specified. Okay. And Jim corrected me on that after Mr. Murphy participated in our last work session. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I know that FOIA interprets um, voting and conversation as participation for which you have to be present. Which makes sense. If you're, if you're debating but not oh. voting, you still have to write that. Right. Participation means all the contributions. Yeah. And voting. this allows you to participate electronically or in person. Right. So you know, okay. there was no real problem because last week was a work session. Right. Okay, great. Thank you for the clarification. Other questions? And do we hear a motion to approve this resolution as presented? I move that we approve this resolution as presented. Second. That's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No, I, I just think I'd add that, you know, I, I appreciate that it's limited to two meetings. I certainly wouldn't want you know, this to be a, a way of people to not be present. So I do think it's good to be present. Mm -hmm. But I, but I also think it, it gives us, as as members of the council, good flexibility when, when there are things that may encumber us otherwise. Mm -hmm. Good point. Is there any other discussion? I ask the clerk to call the court vote. Aye. Aye. Yes. 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 Thank you. Um, <clears throat> item six. <clears throat> item six B. Uh, the zoning map amendment, as you recall, at our last marathon meeting, we approved rezoning the 14 acres up on Bird Street. Now we need to make a motion to amend the zoning map on that matter. 
So is that basically what we're doing, Mr. Matt? On the uh, six B. Okay. Um, you have this um, easement and zoning map amendment as old business from um, last month. Um, both bodies, planning commission and town council, held their public hearings in the month of June. Um, planning commission made recommendation. Council had some discussion on that, but raised a couple of uh, legal questions about the uh, Text of the union contract, especially as related to environmental liability. We're still on 6B. Uh, the zoning map. Yes. Is that where we're on? Yes. Mm -hmm. So there are the two matters okay. for this um, conservation. The zoning map amendment is one of the conditions in the conservation easement. Um, so council held a public hearing related to amending the zoning map. This 14 acres is um, a portion of a parcel. Uh, the wetlands below uh, the tire factory property uh, on the downhill side of the levee. Um, so the uh, the term here is split parcel zone. When you have a large parcel, it can have multiple designations on it. If you it's common in a large parcel, that parcel is being used in different ways. Um, currently, the entire parcel is zone industrial. Um, the opportunity before council is. The acquisition of a conservation easement on that 14 acre parcel. The Outdoors Foundation is the granting authority and has as one of their conditions on the grant that the conserved parcel be rezoned to public, which is consistent with public use. Um, it um, doesn't make sense for a, a property in conservation to continue to be zoned commercial, industrial, or anything other than public. That's the nature of the use. Um, so we set these up on agenda with the map amendment first um, because it wouldn't be logical to accept the easement but not amend the map. You could amend the map, but not so. Okay. <clears throat> Questions for Matt? So, do we hear a motion to amend the zoning map? So moved. Is there a second? second? You second. second. Okay. Any further discussion? I'll ask the clerk to call the vote. Aye. Yes. I am yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Thank you all very much. Okay, and now, now for 6C, conservation easement. Uh, motion to approve the contract. We've been going over this contract. We had questions. We got, I think we got the questions answered uh, sufficiently to make a decision this evening, but I will ask Matt to uh, just uh, real brief what we're voting on here. The, um, the text of the contract um, has not changed. It continues as old business. Um, I can go over a couple more copies here if, you, if you'd like. Um, this was the same item that was before us um, last month. The, the question for follow up related to, as I said, the, um, the nature of environmental liability. And um, it's, it's well established in federal case law that. Environmental liability stays with the party. If you, if you pollute a site um, and you sell it, polluting remains a crime, and the company that did the polluting has to clean it up. Um, Scottsdale was fortunate that the private sector owners of this site, um, Uni Oil, Michelin, Hyacinth, those are all still real companies that can be pursued and prosecuted if there were any problems. Um, in the case of such companies being bankrupt, that's what the EPA super fund is for. There were certain names in the 70s of companies failing and leaving environmental, environmental problems behind them. All that being said, um, there's no indication of environmental problems on the site. It's environmental reports that it's stale, are clean. Um, Outdoors Foundation staff are satisfied with the quality of the property. They inspected it um, on foot on Friday. Um, I did with me and we're very impressed with the uh, wetland plants, um, the birds and the insects there, um, and their, their endorsement 
uh, focus of the good use of the grant funds their school. Mm -hmm. um, so your um, council and agency recommendation is to proceed with the uh, conclusion of the easement. Your attorney has rec uh, requested um, some latitude in the wording of the easement um, to direct uh, the town attorney to execute the agreement, including um, any minor provisions which can make it's possible that the agency or the owner could make some last minute minor changes to this document. Um, and it's the attorney's opinion that they don't substantially alter the deal. Um, he believes that um, it wouldn't be a good use of time and legal resources to return to another matter to proceed with that. Um, so if, if you're comfortable issuing your attorney instructions to uh, execute this easement, including any minor revisions, um, that's the recommendation. And Matt, just to clarify, the percent of the grant is what? It's an $80,000 grant. The town has legal costs related to that for a survey and closing, um, maybe $12,000 in our legal budget. Um, so if you want to do percentages, um, 85% Richmond, 15% town. Thank you. Okay, any questions for Matt? <clears throat> any other questions from Matt? Okay, well, do we hear a motion to approve the contract? So moved. Is there a second? Second. And is there any discussion? One of the things I was going to say just about the property, there was a conversation last session a month ago about actually there was lots of conversation about should we pay for this should it be donated we don't want the landowner to benefit a whole lot of different legitimate concern a little a legitimate expression at the same time we have an organization that is willing to put up a lot of money for this piece of land that really answers a lot of that in other words while it's legitimate that maybe we could do it a different way, we could try it in the future. Sometimes there's the now, so to speak. So we've been given this opportunity now by this organization to do something which we haven't been able to do before. And for my part, I think it's wise for us to move forward, not because it's the best that we could have done, so to speak, but since we can't figure out how to do it better, I think it's pretty good. Thank you, Dan. Any further comments? I just think this is a really important move for the town in terms of preserving our waterfront and taking care of the James River. And we have a scenic river out there as of last year, the year before. And so now sort of starting on the west side of the river, you know, there's protected wetlands. We're now moving into conversation with the Department of Wildlife Resources to improve the boat landing and public access. And so I feel like that's giving us a lot of inertia and momentum to take care of the river, take care of our riverfront, uh, improve the public accountability and access to it, and hopefully it will take us all the way around the other side, so into Blue Band County. Good. Yeah, and I'll just add to that. I had some conversations um, with Department of Wildlife Resources. Um, they referred to Department of Conservation Resources, also talked with James River Association. And then we had a letter from Piedmont Environmental Council. All of them are very supportive of this grant and see this grant as being an important key into future opportunities and future projects to help preserve the river and to help improve access. So we really want to support their vision and their expertise. And this is just one step in that direction. Okay. So could I ask you to um, clarify your motion with the Guidance for the attorney that if there are any minor changes to this document, is the director to execute it? That's exactly how I would have worded it. <laughs> <laughs> any further discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to say that um, I come to that area quite frequently. And, and just to, to, to the next one, as we're talking about, it's that triangle of land um, between uh, the, the factory and the, the ball fields and Bird Street, as well as the land um, between the factory and the railroad tracks. And people are using that, or town is using, have gotten used to using all of that land already. And I think it's great. It's, it's, a, it's a wonderful use of that. And you potentially could lose it if, if, um, if a company.
company came in and bought the, the factory, they could put a fence around that land and they could get that. So the town has a great opportunity um, at a really good price to get access to that land in perpetuity. Um, so uh, this is the kind of chance I think that doesn't come along very often. So I think we, it's really important that we take advantage. Well said. Any other comments? Just to clarify, it's not the entire investment. It's just uh, it's a, a very simple to try to go up by the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, the entire space, uh, the, the majority of that time will be left off of the land people put into the city. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yes, to be clear on the clear on track, there's a, there's a healthy corridor on either side of the first street that's not touched by the city. So okay. if, if any road work needs to be done, that would be space within that. Oh. Um, so you get some of that wedge between the two lines that you're talking about. The muscle. Okay. But the majority of that? Uh, smaller part. No, it's sort of just where the, uh, where there's that little pond that doesn't like the rain. Yeah. And then the little bit of high ground. Mm -hmm. And then it crosses <laughs> through the that little bit of high ground. Yeah. 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 And then from yeah. there, it crosses the crossroad. Outside of the lower uh, driveway, this is a Can I ask a question? Sure. It doesn't take in that whole part of the driveway. Now, a few years ago, they wanted to actually build into the one to infill part of that driveway. That would be something to watch out for. The, the corridor that's off of the easement is big enough to potentially allow that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, okay. The um, recruiting here, the um, council had seen and rejected, planning commission had seen and rejected plans in the past that involved moving earth from one side of the street to the other to create um, space for, for building houses on both sides of the street. Mm -hmm. the, the corridor that's not in the easement is big enough to allow that. So if that's still something that town council doesn't want to do, um, holding that line in the course of land use planning is important because it's not subject to the conservation. That is in the floodplain, is not? Yes. Would that be subject to a special use permit then? Filling in floodplain is um, subject to scrutiny. That filling in floodplain is something that I take very seriously because it affects the flow of water around the whole rest of our city. Yeah. The water can't go in that part of the floodplain, it's going to go somewhere else. But, but that also involves FEMA, then. Yes. And that's, that, that's a big deal. Like if it involves that, that's a, that's a huge deal. Filling in floodplain is not something. Mm -hmm. so I would get that the motion that you just voted on uh, only rezone the portion of this land that the contractor does. And then similar to the conversation that came up in the hearing with Kenny, commission meeting and the committee meeting that I want to speak uh, about this wetland portion being used as green space as a cluster for the hillside. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I guess potentially that wetland area is going to be captured, even though it's still below parcel that we use. What do you say? Okay. Any further comments, discussion? If not, I'll ask the court to call for the vote. Yes, sir. Uh, Dr. Brown. Yes. Uh, Dr. Hall. Yes. Dr. Yes. Dr. Wilson. Yes. Dr. Wilson. Yes. Dr. Hall. Yes. Thank you. Uh, staff reports, uh, as long as you've got the floor there. Mr. Unsworth, would you care to make a report? Oh, let's see. Um, well, you had your year end, I don't have any questions. You have your year end uh, financial report on the uh, uh, consent calendar tonight. I hope you all have a chance to take a look at that. It was uh, a clean budget at the end of the year there. Uh, as Matt said in the work session, uh, one or two lines that we may be collected more on this side of the fiscal year budget uh, than we thought we would. So 
we'll keep an eye on that and see if we have any revenue ones that we expect to go over next year. Um, but on the whole, uh, I think with the great uh, end of the year, we did some uh, capital purchases for the police department that we have before the budget. That's have a little bit ahead on where they uh, probably will be at the end of the year. Um, uh, that's about all the financial stuff I have. Unless you have questions, um, I'll let Matt handle that. Right Didn't here. we come out for six G's ahead? Did it come out what? Fifty-six thousand ahead. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty uh, cool. Uh, <laughs> that's worth entering to the record, I think. Timeline, which you have to spend that surplus from this year? There's no, or is that just going into a savings account? Exactly. That money is now just sitting in the bank. And um, we, you may remember some while back when we started the conversation about the town of Scottsdale on the IT fund and the rest of the we, we went through a few tax years to kind of get a, a glimpse of where all of this had come from. And I think it's a story very much like what you've seen there. Personnel savings from positions that were unfilled. And uh, some larger capital projects that didn't get done in the uh, you know year they were budgeted for and rolled over the following year, so that money was left on the next in the next year. Um, so we have some of that that we might expect to see, you know, this money being allocated to this year's budget. But of course, this year's budget is already budgeted, so uh, there's some dates without this surplus. Uh, Do you mind uh, making a quick comment also about the just the DMV? Yes, yeah, we are up and on our way with that. Um, if you had a chance anyway to see the construction, it's, it's well underway. We're uh, halfway through this month and expecting in the next two weeks, hopefully, to finish that uh, construction project uh, so that in the first two weeks of August, uh, we'll have a week or so of uh, moving into the new space, setting up desks, getting the networking done, all of the new uh, devices installed and everything. And then the following week, that second week of August, will be uh, the week that we start training these uh, residents. That's important to announce as a closure of the office because yeah. all of our DMV staff, including Thomas and myself, need to go to Richmond to be trained. Mm -hmm. We'll need to close this office August 9th through 13th. We'll be back in time for work session committee meetings that week, but the office will be closed for training following that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be before you begin. So we uh, we go through the work session. We have Latoya Hamlet, our DMV supervisor, who started working with us. Uh, she has been wonderful in taking on the, all, all of the many responsibilities with getting this move along. That's a that, huge that piece of uh, help, a big weight off of Matt's shoulders, I know. Um, we move forward with more hiring on that. We have a lot of three part time positions. And at this point, I feel like I see my back on some of this. <laughs> okay, well, we'll just move into match reports. <laughs> yes, sir, thank you. We have some, um, some very good staffing needs. Um, Councilor Malusi spoke to the new farmers market manager. Um, Debbie Smith stepped back to focus on her own uh, farm, family, and retirement. Um, and uh, Ms. Malusi herself, um, Brown Gordon, and I um, rotated with Bill Minnett at the farmers market for a few weeks while we recruited. Um, Caitlin Walls come to us and started work um, this past week. She has uh, degrees in environmental science and ecology from Davidson College. She has um, the better part of 10 years of farm work experience on a number of um, small and biodynamic farms in four states and is intensively cultivating her own plot and preventing climate change at some point. Um, her day job is as an engineering inspector running around the construction site and uh, Providing top notch engineering inspections. Um, so I'm very confident that she can handle the farmers market from the needs of that building to the needs of the farmers. So 
say hello to her if you're not already. We should do sidewalks. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the um, the full staff is the police department. I mentioned earlier with the hiring of this attorney. And um, the DMV recruitment is also happening with the part time DMV clerks starting work on August 2nd. But so they are in here and we'll all go to DMV training and commission together. Um, their names are Tamara Williams, um, who's a Scottsdale area native with excellent. Um, Medical and customer service experience, um, a long career around this region. Ms. Ebony Hubbard comes to us with DMV experience as well. The two of our four staff members are already trained in skills in DMV operation. Um, and Ms. Elijah Jackson is filling out um, several customer service jobs. She's a more recent Charles High School graduate, is currently working across the street at the forest shop, and can add this to the second part time job with Vice District. So I'm very happy to welcome the whole team on August 2nd. All right. Any other questions? Well, tell them about the presentation you made up in Charlottesville the other day. Just so you all know, um, we will have a very great on August 24th. But 